Then we come into uh, June 26th, and you can see that another filter change was done here. And here they censored more data. This time the filter only had 2,000 cubic meters of uh, air through it. And they changed it here. For some reason they didn't record the uh, cumulative sampling volume. The flow rate, they uh, removed the flow rate. Uh, CPM count, counts per minute, jumped. But uh, that doesn't include the beta count. This is just a cum of the beta and the gamma ranges that I calculate. So they removed the beta, but it uh, looks like they left the gammas in in this one. Then, so they put in a new filter. Then they waited two hours after putting, so they censored this one, censored this data. They won't let us see what it is. It's a brand new filter, so this value should be a really good indication of what was coming through the air. They let two hours pass and then another hour before they took a sample again and look where the uh, beta count jumps up to, 120 counts per minute. So there's no telling where this was if they would have sampled it properly in the one hour increment like they're supposed to. So there was a three hour burn off time here. And if we look again, just four seconds later, they start another hour long sample. And this is an appropriate length sample, but they've censored the beta count. So when they didn't do a burn off, the data count had to be censored. So this is suspicious. You censor it, then you do a test for three hours to see, and you only record at the end of the three hours to see what your beta count is. And then you say, all right, let's go back and do a normal test. Let's do just a run for an hour and apparently the value was high enough that they had to censor it. Then we come back uh, the next hour and they do the proper readings and we're up to 114 and then you can see it starts to, to decay out and then beta is at 120. You can see where the overall count was at 4,000 so there's some significant uh, uh, gamma activity going on here too. No telling how high it would have been through here. And I think that's where we come to the end of it. And here's just the color code. Uh, the light blue here is delay between measurements longer than six seconds. Because when the computer does the measurement, one hour, it takes it six seconds to reset, and then it does another hour sample. Orange, that's here in the sample size, and negative sample size means filter change. Uh, I color coded the ones red where the filter change was extremely short. Put in a new filter, take a measurement, rip out the new filter, put in another new filter. And then the sort of light purple is where they actually deleted the readings. So let's look at the overall chart here. And then we'll be done. And so the green here is the radioactive measurements. These uh, purple dots are where they actually removed the data. You can see here where they brought that one down. And these light blue dots, this is where they let the burn off occur, where they would let two or three or four hours of air go through before they take a reading. And that lowers the uh, beta counts of short half-life stuff. And you can see how often this occurred early on. Now what I did was is I put some arrows in here to show where my rain readings were. And here on April 15th I took, I had a 62 times background reading. And if you notice it coincides where they let the uh, betas burn off. And here's the 37 times background reading and then they, they shut off for a week. They came back and this is the day I had a 62, another 62 times background reading on uh, May the 25th. They re replaced the air filter, stuck in a new air filter, ran it once I think for an hour and a half, pulled it out, put in another air filter and they still got these crazy high readings. And then you can see where they kept pulling air filters out to affect the data. Here's where they shortened the data. And here's another burn off point where they uh, let the filters run extra long to let the beta burn off before they took a reading. And if you notice on this is the day that I measured, uh, June 11th, where I measured 50 times background. Then we come up to the more recent times and we have two data sensors, a burn off, and an early filter removal. Now if you notice here at this early point, they're censoring the, they're a lot more active in actually going in and censoring the data 
especially in this burn off. But you can see, even though they're sampling individual data points, you can still see there's a large trend increasing here. And you know, I wonder what this would have looked like. It's possible it could have been up here, it could have been higher and coming down. But you can see between March and uh, end of April, a lot of censoring, but the clear trend is increasing radiation. So it's, uh, it's interesting. And we'll go back to the website for a second. And you can find the website at uh, Potterblog, P-O-T-R-B-L-O-G.com. And I put down the information. Uh, another chart here, the same chart. If you click on it, it'll blow up a lot bigger. Now, I'll sum up by the end here. It says, I hope the EPA will provide an alternative explanation for the analysis. And if they do, hopefully they'll release all the raw, unmanipulated data. You know, there was a time in this country where it was illegal to uh, give tornado warnings because they thought people would panic and freak out if they got tornado warnings. They thought the damage and death toll would be greater from people panicking from tornado warnings than from the actual tornado. So I wonder if some of that's going on here, if they're manipulating the data to protect us, quote unquote, from panic. And then the other thing is, is if they, you know, for some reason, hopefully, if somebody EPA explains what's going on here, they'll actually release their manuals and instructions covering the collection of such data and you know, to see how much of this was uh, outside of uh, standard operating procedures. And so if you click on it, there you can read the data in uh, more detail. So good night. And... Uh, Contact your EPA representative, and I tend to think of this as a, a group think tank exploring these exploring these issues. So, if somebody else would like to go in here and uh, map weather phenomena against these dates and these times, and maybe map some uh, uh, Fukushima release info, for example, when the explosions were, uh, some uh, fallout plume charts. Maybe we'll have a better idea of what's going on. But once again, thank you for watching and good night.